To finish this lecture on uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo methods, I would like to make the link with optimization, and in particular with an algorithm called simulated annealing. And we will see that this optimization algorithm is actually derived from the Metropolis Hastings algorithm. And let's see how. So here I will consider an optimization problem, a minimization problem. And we call it a combinatorial optimization because the set of feasible solution is large and finite. I will denote by x star the set of optimal solutions and by f star the value of the objective function at an optimal solution. So depending on the problem, you can have one optimal solution or, or several optimal solutions. But anyway, the set x star is the set of optimal solutions. Now, using the same intuition that I used when I introduced the knapsack problem in the, in the beginning, I will af associate a probability mass function on the set of feasible solutions. So if you give me a value x, I will associate a probability distribution that will depend on a parameter lambda based on this formula here. So these are the ingredients. Let's do some manipulation now. I will introduce here the value of f star everywhere so that this and this are the same. But now this quantity here that we find at the numerator and the denominator, we know for sure that it is negative, or at least non-positive, because f star is the best possible value, the lowest possible value within the feasible set. It means that when the parameter lambda here goes to infinity, the probability mass function, the probability that is given here, will basically concentrate on the optimal solution. Indeed, if x is an optimal solution, this difference will be zero and lambda will not play a role. But if it is not optimal, f star minus f of x will be a negative number. And because lambda goes to plus infinity, the probability will go to zero. So asymptotically, this probability will be zero for any non-optimal solution and will be equal to one divided by the number of optimal solutions for all optimal solutions. So in particular, if there was a unique optimal solution, the probability will be one. That's what we mean by the fact that the mass is concentrating on the optimal solutions. Let's take an example. Here I take an example where I have three feasible solutions, one, two, three, and the value of the objective function is zero, one, zero. So therefore I have two optimal solutions, one and three, with value zero, and one non-optimal solution, two, with value one. And these are the probabilities as defined before as a function of the parameter lambda. So let's plot them to see what happens. The first thing to note is that when lambda equals zero, we have equal probability. Right? So this is the extreme case where basically, irrespectively of the value of the objective function, the probability assigned to each feasible solution is the same. So this is illustrated here. So when lambda equals zero, we have one third, one third, one third for the probability. And then on the x-axis, I will increase lambda. And on the y-axis, I will plot the probability for each of the solution. And basically, we have two solutions with the same value of the objective function, 1 and 3. It's, they are represented by the blue curve on the top. And the last solution, 2, which is associated with the value 1, which is suboptimal, is represented by the lower curve. And as you can see, when lambda increases, the probability associated with the suboptimal solution will decrease and eventually go to 0 while the probability of the optimal solution will increase and take all the mass. And eventually here, because we have two optimal solutions, it will converge to 50%. Why is it interesting? Well, assume now that we are able to draw from this distribution. If we are able to draw from this distribution, let's say for lambda equals 6, what we will obtain are the optimal solution, because the suboptimal solution are associated with a very low probability, close to zero. So that's the idea. 
I have a probability distribution where the mass is concentrated on the optimal solutions. Therefore, if I'm able to draw from it, I will generate optimal solutions. And I know how to draw from complex distributions, right? This is metropolis Hastings. And this is the idea of simulated annealing. If lambda is large, we will apply the metropolis Hastings algorithm. So we generate a Markov chain with stationary distribution defined as before, p lambda of x. We know that the mass is concentrated on optimal solution. And we know also that because we use metropolis Hastings, there is no need to calculate the normalizing constant. And that's fortunate because, again, the feasible set is huge. We will not be able to enumerate. So we can use only the numerator. In the context of optimization, the vehicle that will be used to explore the space is usually called the neighborhood structure. And the idea is that from a solution X, we will build a neighbor solution, which is basically constructed from a simple modification of X. But this is exactly the same concept that we discussed in the context of metropolis Hastings, of the original Markov process. It's a way to explore the space. So this Markov process, which is basically characterized by Q in the previous part of the lecture, will proceed from neighbors to neighbors to visit the space. And we'll have the same recommendation. So the, the neighborhood structure must be designed in a good way. The, the chain must be reducible. We, we need to be able to reach any state. Um, it has also to be sufficiently fast and sufficiently slow, as we discussed before. Everything else is the same. And now we can apply metropolis Hastings. Let's denote n of x, the set of neighbors of x, which can be constructed by any neighborhood structure. And I define a Markov process where the next state consists in jumping to one of the neighbors randomly. In this case, the transition probability is simply 1 divided by the number of neighbors. And now I can calculate the accept probability of the metropolis Hastings. Okay, this is given by the formula that we know already. The p's are given by e to the minus lambda f, as discussed before, and the, the q's are basically the ratio of the size of the neighborhoods. Well, in practice, you can always make the problem symmetric, so you can define a neighborhood structure that is such that every solution has the same number of neighbors. In that case, this simplifies to this. Note that if y, the candidate, is better than x, it means that the value of the objective function is lower than the value of the objective function at x, well, the next state is automatically accepted with probability 1. Otherwise, it is accepted with the probability that depends on lambda and on the value of f. If lambda is high, the probability is small. And when lambda is small, it's easy to escape from local optima. So intuitively, we can interpret the metropolis Hastings algorithm as a way to explore the space in the optimization context. Each time we find a better solution, we keep it. And if we find a solution which is not better, we will decide if we keep it depending on the value of the objective function at this place, but also on this parameter lambda that defines the probability. As you recall from the description of the metropolis Hastings algorithm, it may take a while to reach a stationary state, especially in this context, because each time the algorithm will land on a non-optimal solution, it will be rejected. So it means that the algorithm can be stuck forever in the same place, right? So actually, this is not very practical. And eventually, the number of iterations you will need may exceed the number of feasible solutions in your optimization problem. So clearly, this is not a practical way to, to generate optimal solution. But the idea has been exploited in the context of what we call heuristics. So a heuristic is a, an optimization algorithm that is not guaranteeing to find the optimal solution, but that will hopefully find, in a reasonable time, a good solution. In this context, the lambda parameter will be called the temperature. Uh, and the name simulated annealing comes from with an analogy with metallurgy. And I refer you to the lecture on, on heuristics for a more elaborate discussion about simulated annealing.
But the key thing here is to understand that the idea of simulated annealing is basically derived from Metropolis Hastings algorithm. And this idea of exploring the space and deciding to accept or reject a candidate depending on the quality of this candidate. This concludes the lecture on uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo method. These methods are quite complex, but as we saw in the motivation, they are designed to draw from very complex distributions. We actually saw two examples. One was to draw from a, a set which is combinatorial, so which is huge. And the second example was to perform Bayesian inference of unknown parameters of complex models. The main algorithm that we have seen is called Metropolis Hastings, and it has basically two ingredients. One ingredient is a Markov process that is designed to explore the state space. It must be designed in a careful way and must exploit the structure of the problem in order to be efficient. And the second ingredient is an accept-reject method where we basically keep candidates in, in such a way that the eventual distribution will be consistent with the target distribution. We have illustrated the metropolis Hastings algorithm and then we have applied it to the problem of drawing from multivariate random variables. In this case, we have derived the property that all candidates are automatically accepted. And this algorithm, which consists in applying metropolis Hastings to draw from multivariate distributions, is called Gibbs sampling. And finally, I've shown you the link between MCMC and optimization, showing that the heuristic name simulated annealing is actually inspired from applying the metropolis Hastings algorithm on a probability distribution function on the feasible set that is defined in a way that all the mass is concentrated on the optimal solution. You will find in the appendix a little more information about Markov chain and stationary distributions. Mm -hmm.